start with uh, session 2 unit 1 of animal cell culture it deals with laboratory facility animal cell culture part this is session 2 okay it deals with the laboratory facility which is required for animal cell culture the basic uh, equipment and the facilities in animal cell culture it needs a space which is free for free from uh, pathogenic microorganism the cell culture laboratories have a common requirement of free from pathogenic microorganism it also depends on the type of research conducted and the requirement of mammalian cell culture are different from the insect uh, cell culture requirement it needs a proper planning and preparation the lab can be in a uh, variety of ways as, as long as some fundamental uh, basics are in place some of the the materials you need to keep for a prolonged periods in the lab should include the refrigerator freezer and the culture and supplies we need to keep it from free from any uh, contaminants like microorganisms this is a, a one uh, a blueprint for a cell culture laboratory okay here you can see the main entry the double doors here you have a soaking sink and washing facility for animal cell culture uh, here it is a two tire high low temperature drying oven uh, after washing you can keep it for drying and uh, sterilization here the air exhaust again autoclave sterilizing oven and storage rack uh, here this is the place where for laminar air flow where uh, the, the culture technique will be carried out we have a microscopic facility the air intake and air conditioner and regular incubator and the carbon dioxide incubator along with carbon dioxide supply and there is a place for refrigerator freezer and a bench shelf over cryo freezers and so these are uh, the the requirements and in the center you can see here it is the cell counting facility centrifuge water purifier and the uh, preparatory bench for um, the cell culture technique this is one ideal uh, uh, map or which shows the where are the, the certain equipments which are placed in the animal cell culture laboratory so let's start one by one the sterile work area you know that sterile work area uh, where possible a separate room sh uh, should be made available for clean cell culture work it is usually done in lab the room should be free of uh, thorough traffic and if possible equipped with uh, an airflow cabinet which supplies the filter air around the workspace high efficiency particulate air filters which are required to filter the air supply which is desirable but not always affordable and the primary animal cell culture and the microorganism must not be cultured in the or near the cell culture laboratory they should not be done to, that is together and the laboratory must be specifically separate designated for uh, clean cell culture work so it may be for animal cell culture or microorganism it should be carried out in a different uh, sterile working area the next one is incubation facilities in addition to the airflow cabinet and benching which can be easily cleaned and the cell culture laboratory will need to be furnished with incubator or art room for maintain the the cells at 30 to 40 degrees centigrade for the growth the incubation temperature will depend on the type of cells being cultivated the insect cells will grow best at around 30 degree while mammalian cells require a temperature of 37 degree so it may be necessary to use an incubator which has been designated to allow carbon dioxide to be supplied from main supply or gas cylinder so that an atmosphere of between 2 to 5 percent carbon dioxide is maintained in the incubator for the growth of the cells the next is a storage facility it will be in the refrigerators or freezers both the items are very important for storage of liquid media at 4 degree of enzyme, like trypsin which is a proteolytic enzyme 
and some media components like glutamine and serum at minus 20 degree centigrade. A refrigerator or cold room is required to store medium and buffers. A freezer will be needed for keeping uh, pre allocated stocks of serum, nutrients, and antibiotics. The reagents may be stored at a temperature of minus 20 degree, but if the cells are to be preserved, it may be necessary to provide the liquid nitrogen that is at minus 90 to 70, 90, or 120 degree that is called cryopreserver, that is also called as freezer cryopreservers. Then you need microscope. A simple inverted microscope is essential so that the cultures can be examined in flask and dishes. It is vital to be uh, able to recognize the morphological changes in the culture after growth since this may be the first indication of deterioration of culture or growth of the cells. A very simple light microscope with 100x magnification will uh, sufficient for routine cell uh, counts in a hemocytometer though the microscope of much better quality will be required for chromosome analysis and autoradiography study. Then you need tissue culture where a variety of tissue culture plastic uh, where is available and the most common being uh, specially treated polystyrene. Although all tissue culture plastic ways should be support the cell growth adequately. It is essential uh, when using a new supplier or a type of dish to ensure that culture grow happily in it. So these are the different types of tissue culture ware commonly employed in the animal cell culture laboratory. The tests to ensure this such as growth curves, the time of reaching confluent monolayer are similar to those used to ensure that serum batches are satisfactory for uh, culture. When the washing up and sterilizing facilities, the availability of wide range of plastic tissue culture reduces the amount of necessary washing up. However, uh, the glassware should be soaked in a suitable detergent then passed to the stringent washing procedure with thorough soaking in distilled water uh, prior to drying and sterilizing. Pipettes are often plugged with non-adsorbent cotton wool before putting into the containers for sterilizing. Uh, then uh, you need liquid uh, nitrogen defreezers as I told you. Uh, invariably for continuous and finite cell lines, samples of culture will need to be frozen uh, for storage for longer duration. It is important to maintain the continuity in cells to prevent the uh, genetic drift to guard against the loss of cell lines to the contamination and other disasters. The procedure for freezing cells is general for all cell lines in the culture. They should be frozen in an exponential phase of growth with suitable preservatives, usually uh, DMS dimethyl sulfoxide. The cells are also frozen slowly at 1 degree per minute to minus 50 degree, then they are kept either at minus 196 degree, immersed in liquid nitrogen in sealed glass amphibes or above the liquid surface in the gas. The deterioration of frozen cells has been absorbed at minus 70 degree, therefore minus 196 degree it seems to be necessary for uh, de uh, deep freezer or preservation. The water facility as we know it is very essential a double distilled river osmosis water supply is essential for preparation of media and rinsing glass waste. The pH of the double distilled water should be regularly checked in some cases this, this can vary and variations in the quality of water also uh, it account for variation in the results. Therefore water from one source should be used. Water is sterilized by autoplumbing at 121 degree for 20 minutes. The distilled water must be uh, glass distilled and stored it in glass if it is to be used for preparation of media. Storage in plastic may result in leaching of non-toxic substance from plastic into water. Then you need filter sterilization. Media cannot be autoclaved if they are along with some enzymes or proteins. Okay, must be sterilized to 0.22 micro with a pore size membrane filters. These are obtained from various designs to allow the wide range of volumes. Okay, from millipore and gelma. They can be purchased as a sterile disposable filters. And they may be sterilized by autoclaving in suitable filter holders. Culture media, enzymes, hormones, cofactors, bicarbonate buffers are uh, uh, sterilized by using this uh, filter sterilization. The example which are non autoclavable substances. Then you need a facility for cell counting of the cell growth. It is possible to monitor the cell growth by the eyes, but however, more accurate cell counts are required for uh, more experimental purpose. So that is done by uh, that is new bar chamber 
as we do in the laboratory for blood cell counting okay it consists of a thickened side and the central chamber of a depth and it is used for cell counting you know how to count the cells by using hemocytometer and the other one is the flow cytometry the great it is also a technique employed so here the explanation is given for hemocytometer a, a grid is etched out in a silver chamber bottom the counting chamber is prepared and loaded with suspension of single cells for counting this is an uh, overall uh, summary of equipment required for cell animal cell culture laboratory i have listed here all those things laminar air flow carbon dioxide incubator centrifuge refrigerator cryo storage container liquid nitrogen container hemocytometer water bath flow cytometry in, uh, inverted microscope and dissecting microscope glass vase and plastic vase and also uh, just watch this video it is also available in the youtube that is the cell culture laboratory and equipment overview section 1 the cell culture laboratory and equipment overview whilst it is true to say that most cell culture is carried out in laboratories not specifically designed for the purpose cell culture should be performed in a dedicated facility cell lines pose a potential health threat so you must consult your local safety and environmental regulations always carry out a risk assessment using appropriate documentation before working with any cells or cell lines At the European collection of cell cultures, the cell culture laboratories are operated at a negative pressure to the environment. This acts to contain any potential contaminating aerosols. In order to maintain a clean working environment, the laboratory surfaces, including bench tops, walls, and flooring, should be smooth and easy to clean. They should also be waterproof and resistant to chemicals. Floors and walls should be continuous. with coved skirting to make cleaning easier and reduce the potential for dust to accumulate windows to the lab should be sealed and work surfaces positioned at a comfortable working height areas used for the storage of materials in liquid nitrogen should have floors resistant to cracking now let's look at the equipment that should be found in an effective cell culture laboratory microbiological safety cabinets also referred to as MSC2 cabinet or hood probably the most important piece of equipment for cell culture since when operated correctly it provides a clean working environment whilst protecting the operator operator and product protection is provided through a combination of airflow negative pressure and hepa filters cabinet exhaust may be ducted to atmosphere or recirculated through a second hepa filter back into the laboratory microscopes regular monitoring of cell cultures is essential as it will provide a lot of information regarding cell growth and general health of cultures in order to do this a properly set up inverted phase microscope is required a standard light microscope is also useful for applications such as cell counting as we will see later microscopes are precision instruments and should be well looked after always turn off and cover when not in use Centrifuges. Centrifuges are used to rapidly sediment cells into a pellet to allow transfer of cells into different media or buffers. A small bench top centrifuge with controlled braking and rotors with swing out buckets and sealed caps is sufficient for most purposes. Situate the centrifuge where it can be easily accessed for cleaning and maintenance and away from microscopes which can be affected by vibration. During centrifugation, care should always be taken not to overfill the tubes and to balance them carefully to reduce the risk of damage to both the centrifuge and the cells and reduce aerosol generation. Check regularly for any signs of corrosion. Cells sediment satisfactorily between 80 and 150 g. Higher gravitational forces may cause damage and promote agglutination of the cell pellet. incubators in vitro cell culture should mimic the in vivo cell environment selection of incubator its features and settings are dictated by the cell system being studied 37 degrees centigrade 95% humidity and 5% co2 are required by most mammalian cells and media more diverse cells may need other incubation conditions regularly check and replace water in the reservoir 
independently check the temperature using a calibrated thermometer and CO2 levels using a firite gas analyzer or similar. Regularly check CO2 supply cylinder levels are sufficient, especially before weekends and holidays. Incubators are ideal breeding grounds for bacteria and molds, which could contaminate your cultures. Minimize this risk with regular monitoring and cleaning. Water baths. Water baths are used for thawing out frozen cells, heat inactivation of serum, and warming of media and reagents prior to culturing. As another potential source of contamination from bacteria and molds, water baths should be regularly cleaned and replenished with fresh water treated with a suitable antimicrobial agent. Fridges and freezers. Most cell culture reagents require storage in a fridge or freezer. Always check labels and literature provided by suppliers. To avoid repeated heating and cooling of reagents, aliquot reagents into suitable volumes and concentrations. Always label these containers appropriately. It should be noted that pouring from container to container is not normally considered good practice. But in the case of the aliquoting of entire bottles of media or reagents, pouring is acceptable. Consumables. An effective laboratory will have a wide range of consumables available. The majority of cell culture flasks, centrifuge tubes and pipettes are available in single-use sterile packs. These ensure a high level of quality assurance and eliminate the need for validation of cleaning and sterilization. Section 1. The Cell Culture Laboratory Incubators In V incubation conditions, regularly check and replace water in the reservoir. Independently check the temperature using a calibrated thermometer and CO2 levels using a firite gas analyzer or similar. Regularly check CO2 supply cylinder levels are sufficient, especially before weekends and holidays. Incubators are ideal breeding grounds for bacteria and molds, which could contaminate your cultures. Minimize this risk with regular monitoring and cleaning. Water baths. Water baths are used for thawing out frozen cells, heat inactivation of serum, and warming of media and reagents prior to culturing. As another potential source of contamination from bacteria and molds, Water baths should be regularly cleaned and replenished with fresh water treated with a suitable antimicrobial agent. Fridges and freezers. Most cell culture reagents require storage in a fridge or freezer. Always check labels and literature provided by suppliers. To avoid repeated heating and cooling of reagents, aliquot reagents into suitable volumes and concentrations. Always label these containers appropriately. It should be noted that pouring from container to container is not normally considered good practice. But in the case of the aliquoting of entire bottles of media or reagents, pouring is acceptable. Consumables. An effective laboratory will have a wide range of consumables available. The majority of cell culture flasks, centrifuge tubes and pipettes are available in single-use sterile packs. These ensure a high level of quality assurance and eliminate the need for validation of cleaning and sterilization. Okay, thank you for watching. Keep watching.